Hey guys, Bill Hampson from Workout America TV coming to you from the brand new Gold Gym in Stewart, Florida. And today we're going to do a piece for you on shoulder power. It's all about preventing injury for the shoulder and also developing uh, hitting and throwing power for volleyball girls, tennis girls, pitchers, quarterbacks, any overhead athlete would profit from this. Our goal here is to discuss some training options that can have a profound prophylactic effect on shoulder injury and shoulder health and also develop better uh, hitting and throwing power. My audience is uh, young developing athletes, their parents and coaches. Now many of the kids I see coming up, uh, you know, particularly the high school kids, are really overplayed and underconditioned and consequently many young developmental athletes never develop to their full potential. Now in my 30 years of coaching I know a little bit about hitting and throwing and overhead athletes. I've trained major league pitchers wearing three pennant rings. I've trained three national tennis champions, two in this country and a British national champion and I've trained uh, volleyball uh, All-American players. So when we talk about the shoulder, the shoulder is the most freely moving joint in the body and also one of the most, if not the most, frequently injured body parts. It is critically dependent on the strength of the musculature and connective tissue that surrounds it for structural integrity. In fact, with many seniors, we see sort of a spontaneous dislocation of the, of the shoulder where the upper arm or the humerus just drops out of the socket because we don't have the muscle tone and the muscular and tendon the strength to support it anymore. So prophylactic or prehabilitative exercise may not sound too sexy. It, you know, it doesn't have the same ring to it as the winning pitch or hitting the game-changing kill shot. But you're no good to yourself, to your team, or the coaches when you're riding the bench nursing a debilitating injury. And when do most injuries present? When it counts the most. You're at the end of a long hard season, you're in the middle of a long hard tournament, for the finals the chips are on the line, and you're a friggin' train wreck because injuries uh, have not allowed you to play at full, you know, full potential uh, or play at all. So we want to look at not only improving performance, but keeping you in the game longer. So now, if we're throwing a 90 mile an hour fastball or hitting a 100 mile an hour tennis service, the humerus is moving six to 9,000 degrees at the glenohumeral joint. Six to 9,000 degrees a second. That's incredible power. And at the bottom of the stroke, the humerus is actually trying to dislocate from the shoulder. What puts the brakes on are the small muscles at the posterior of the shoulder, the accelerators. So think for a minute about a race car. If you've got good brakes and you can stay on the accelerator longer, drive into a corner faster and harder, you are going to go faster. The shoulder is the same way. Your body will inhibit movements that it cannot control. If we're deficient in the deaccelerators, then we have to put the brakes on a lot earlier. You can't throw or hit a strike as hard, but if we can stay on the power longer through the stroke, then you are immediately going to hit harder. You're also going to be more resilient to injury. And where do most shoulder injuries present? posterior shoulder deaccelerators. So we're going to talk now a little bit about shoulder physiology. So now the shoulder is really a pretty intricate joint. It's a, it's a really interesting joint and, and the shoulder is actually four joints in one. You've got the sternoclavicular joint right here. You've got the acromioclavicular joint here where the spine of the scapula rolls around to form the acromion process and meets the scapula. You've got the glenohumeral joint here and then you've got the scapular thoracic articulation. So this whole affair is like the wishbone suspension in your car. It's a very mobile freely moving joint and it's really only connected structural connection 
it is right here at this very shallow sternoclavicular joint. So we hear a lot about rotator cuff musculature. Rotor, uh, rotator cuff muscular is the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis under here. Now when we look at implications of throwing, there's a lot more musculature involved and there's a lot more musculature that affects the shoulder girdle, not just the shoulder joint. So a lot of our training, and particularly prehabilitative training, focuses on just those rotator cuff muscles. That is uh, really kind of flawed thinking. It's a lot more uh, complex and, and broader uh, issue. So when we look at the big muscles that produce throwing, right underneath the arm here is the bicipital groove of the humerus. So what contributes to throwing? You've got the lats, which is a huge muscle, sweeps up the whole posterior of the back, originates along the iliac crest and lumbar aponeurosis, crosses the axillary board of the scapula to prevent winging scapula, and it attaches right under here. So when you look at that arm pulling forward, your lats not only pull the arm down, but they internally rotate it which is what happens in throwing. All of the muscles of the pec, and we've got clavicular, sternal, and coastal fibers of the pec, all sweep this way and attach where? Right here at the bicipital groove of the humerus, and inwardly rotate that arm, particularly the coastal muscles, which are on stretch when we're overhead for a strike. What also helps the lats is the teres minor, or pardon me, the teres major, which is right under here. It's got a really short stroke, again to the bicipital groove of the humerus. It works with the lats. It's known as the lats little helper. Uh, again, all this muscular, huge musculature participating to pull the arm forward. You've got the subscapularis under here, which again uh, crosses the whole uh, uh, front border of the scapula attaches to the bicipital groove that participates you've got the serratus anterior which attaches on the back here and interdigitates with the coastals and then uh, another depressor of the scapula is the pec minor so you've got all this huge musculature dragging that arm forward six to nine thousand degrees a second and what puts the brakes on the little stuff right back here teres minor infraspinatus, posterior delt. So every time that shoulder goes forward, that stuff is going on this crazy loaded stretch. So again, where do we see shoulder injuries? Deaccelerators. That's what puts the brakes on every time you strike or throw. Again, the other thing is if these are weak, we cannot produce the power we're capable of with the anterior musculature. So we're going to start this. We'll talk about exercises for the big stuff in front, but you're probably already doing that. Guys are doing lat pulls downs and benches. And that's all part of the stuff. But we're going to look at some, some novel and functional ways to address this area and tie it all together. Therapists talk about creating a posterior dominant shoulder, if possible, to counteract that. And again, we need to look at the rotational effect of throwing. throwing is a contralateral cross-body event, just like walking and running is contralateral. The therapeutic community would describe that as a PNF or a cross-body pattern. A lot of guys in functional training talk about the serape effect, op, you know, opposing shoulder to hip and a throw. So we're going to address some of that when we look at balancing out the shoulder.